Welcome back to Legend Hunter Zero. Let's go ahead and take this from the top. Yeah, so should we tell them what happened last while recording this? Well, it's not actually this recording, but while we were trying to get this part for Flame Mammoth, uh, we actually recorded during a power surge and we actually lost half that uh, that original footage. Yeah, so I'm in control and I'm playing uh, Flame Mammoth. All right, so one of the more interesting systems that the earlier teams have is that when you defeat certain Mavericks, it causes changes in the stage levels. For instance, uh, normally the part that's on the bottom right there that's cemented over would actually be boiling hot lava. But yeah. because we defeated Chill Penguin, uh, we don't have to deal with that. Which is very nice. All right. Now, there is an, uh, a heart up in this level, there is a sub tank in this level, and there is an X upgrade in this level, which I'm assuming Zero is going to attempt to do right now. Yes. Hey, there we go. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Don't. Ah, uh, you missed it. Restart. All right, take two. I hope. Keep in mind, I kind of suck at this. And yet you're the one who suggested we do it. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, got it. There you go. All right. This capsule contains a part. Which will increase the capabilities of your X Buster. You can use it to fire all types of weapons. I'm trying to remember the Dr. Light voice from last time, and I think I got it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is the second upgrade, right? Third. third. Oh, third. My third, mistake. Third. It, it's stupid because the head part's only purpose is to get this part. I know, that's kind of dumb. So, from here. It should be a lot easier. Now down here, avoiding these pickaxe guys, I hate these guys. You can find the heart container. I'm actually doing a lot better than I thought I would be doing, to be honest. Yeah, just be careful with using that, uh, with using the power up too much. I know, I'm careful. And jump over here, and we get the E-Tank. Now the problem is getting this thing. Yeah, it's kind of annoying, but at least with the leg parts it helps. So yeah, just there you go. There we go. Mm -hmm. So that's two E-Tanks we've got. There's four in all, so we have two more to go, and I think... Uh... There are as many life upgrades for um, for each stage. There's eight heart tanks and four sub tanks. All right, so and hey, I'm back to full uh, energy. Yeah. So, like Dr. Light said, we can act, you can actually charge special weapons now. So, you fully charge up the tornado here for a second, Zero. Okay. Okay. Once you get to the pink charge, that's when you know you have it, and that pretty much destroys anything on top, below, or around you. The um, the shotgun ice that we got in pink in uh, in uh, chill penguin stage uh, actually creates a sled for you to ride on, which is not bad. But uh, I'm not a fan of chill penguins uh, moves. Oh god, you have no idea how many times I've tried to get through this area. And you can see how I'm dying. Alright, there we go. Alright then, so that was actually a surprisingly short level. Well, considering you didn't die. Uh-huh. But I am going to die here. We'll see. Should I use the E-Tank or...? Uh... If you want to. I mean, I don't have any... I'll, I'll pro you'll probably fill it back up. So the important thing to know about Flame Mammoth is that uh, he will jump to where you are um, if you're off screen. And if he and if you're on the ground when he lands, it charge it, uh, it it puts you into a stun state, which really sucks. By the way, that he is technically throwing out oil onto the platform. Can you get hit by the oil? No, the oil does nothing. But what happens is if he ignites the oil, it does a it does more damage than the regular fire shot that he does. <sighs> so so you do have to be careful with that he doesn't light the fire. I've only happened 
I've only had it happen to me on occasions where I let him do it, but it, it, it's such a clumsy combination that the AI usually doesn't connect properly. You usually want to stay near him because then you can see where his jumps are. Got it! There you go. That was surprisingly a lot easier than I thought it would be. Yeah, all you need to do from that point is actually focus on dodging the fire and then shooting. But otherwise, that's he's not too bad. By the way, this is the only boss I was able to practice on. Alright, my, right, my turn. Yep, so I'm handing the controller back to Leo, and we've gotten a new upgrade. We got the Fire Wave, which, eh, I don't think I was ever a fan of using it. It's actually really good. It just has one drawback in one stage, but really you wouldn't even use it for that stage anyway. All right, then. So, okay, so this is kind of weird, because this is the I think this is the only X game I ever play out of order. Really? Because, um, remember, as you noticed, we actually took out Chill Penguin first. Yeah. That's... And, and Storm Eagle, and then we went to Flame Mammoth. So, we're going to take a... And technically, the order should have been Storm Eagle, Flame Mammoth, then Chill Penguin. Because Chill Penguin is actually weak to the Fire Wave. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Um, so, before we, uh, before we go ahead and continue on to the next Maverick... Uh, actually, yeah, we can go back here. Can we? Yeah, there we go. I'm pressing the wrong button. Derp. So, it's so, so, we're, so I said, er, I said in a previous episode that the other, the other, uh, uh, there was the, another the, upgrade. The, the heart, the heart tank in this stage, we needed to come back until we got, until we got a different, until we got a different weapon. And in this case, we need the fire wave in order to get the, uh, the heart tank here. Uh -huh. These robots are really durable. But anyway, so jump over here. And then go back up to where the hidden uh, hidden area is. You go ahead and you can fire away with these igloos, and that's where you get the heart tank. Ah, I see. Even better, you can actually exit areas that you've already been to. All right, that's so. That's so pretty nice. It gives you a nice advantage if we had to go replay and find everything. All right. So, who, what's next on our list? Next one, we're going to take on Spark Mandrill. Ah. If I recall, there was an upgrade that we needed to get here one time that I could never get. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. That I, I went back and I saw how to get it, and I think I can do it now. It's just that I, I hadn't played on an actual controller on this version for so long, and so it was a pain in the ass to get it. But oh, so you were playing on like the? Computer? I was playing the iOS version, so the, the timing and some of the layouts were slightly different. All right. Uh. So there is another, there is a uh, sub tank here also, but we can't get it yet because we also lack the special weapon. Ah, so another bit of backtrack. So another us. bit of backtrack, but this is going to be much, I, I think it's going to be at least two episodes before we come back to get it. Alright. This is going to be like, what, maybe two or three bosses an episode, you think? Uh, I'd say about two bosses an episode, depending on how, on how well we do. Alright. And... If anything, this is a pretty dang uh, awesome uh, theme for the area. It is a very nice theme. Oh, oh, so I should comment: the blackout area that we were just that we just did only happens when uh, when you beat Storm Eagle first. And you might have noticed at the start of the area uh, there were remnants of Storm Eagle's plane. Oh, now time for a mini boss. Was not expecting a mini boss. Yeah, this is the only level I think that has a true mini boss. Although I may be wrong. Uh, anyway, the big thing about this dude is that he likes to go ahead and throw around bubbles and then jump on you. That is a weird effect. Yeah. He also had he also had the ability to cast uh, to cast thunderbolts on you too, but that only occurs if you're playing if you're playing before you do uh, before you do storm eagles. I see. Mission. Well, we got an extra life. And um, as far as like the difficulty of this game is compared to some of the other, I mean, I played this a lot as a little kid, so I really got the hang of things really quick. I know all the ins and outs. But um, as far as like difficulty in terms of the X games and the X series, um, this is pretty okay. 
I mean, it's, it's not the easiest or the hardest. No, um, as far as like in the whole X series, I would want to say that the hardest is either six or three are the hardest X games. Keep in mind, I've only ever played X and X5. Or uh, five isn't too bad, actually. All things considered. So this is the uh, this is the heart tank that we were getting trouble. And what I did here is I dash jump by pressing the jump and the dash button at the same time to get enough distance to come off the come off the walls or hit that ledge. All right. So that was the one upgrade we were missing last time you we would, played this game. Yeah, and I could not for the life of me remember how you were supposed to get it. I thought it had to do I thought it was either um, a uh, a jump that you had to make with the with the the slide or it was a uh, or it was using one of the other weapons you got in the game but no it's actually just a time jump that's really, really difficult to make unless you know how, unless you know how to input it. Also those enemies that rush by you like that yeah are really annoying at the start because they actually don't come out of randomly, they only come in certain places as you approach the... as you go across the corridor. Ah, I see. So, time for the boss. Spark Mandrill. Like I said, uh, this boss is weak to the shotgun ice, which is is uh, which is the first map, which is from Chill Penguin, which we took earlier. Alright, so... So, Spark Mandrill. He is really funky looking. Yeah, he is. Okay, so... Normally, you could cheese this fight out as easily as possible because as soon as you hit him, and as soon as the hit stun is nearly over, you can hit him again. <laughs> so this is a really easy boss to cheese out if you don't, if you uh, have plenty of, if you have plenty of life and are not sucking like that. See, you can, you can nearly hit stun him and make it a pain in the ass to kill. Wow, you, that yeah, that was kind of <laughs> cutting it close. A little bit close. Um, outside of the electrical charge attack and the dash punch, he occasionally jumps up to the giant bars and swings around and then drops on top of you, but, uh, not too challenging. Yeah. That was a pretty quick fight. <laughs> pretty quick level. Wow. Mm -hmm. I was expecting this to take a little longer. Uh-uh. So, what do you think? One more guy, or...? One more. We can do one more. So this is the electric spark. It shoots out, um... Balls of energy. Balls of energy that when they hit the wall... They travel up it. Mm -hmm. um, the charged version of it allows you to shoot two energy walls to the side of you. All right. All right. So the next one that we should go ahead and do is armored armadillo, the dude of right as off storm eagle. That one. All right. And this one, um, Zero. I don't know if you remember this level, but be be, be ready for the for the panic. Oh God! Isn't this the one with minecarts? Yeah, it's the minecart level. Fuck. <laughs> Well, if I decide to rage quit, you'll know why. You got hit by the cart? Yeah, that's a good sign of things to come. Yeah. So yeah, this is a minecart level. How about that? And uh, if you actually let the intro screen go on, it'll show you a full, um, like a full mini let's play of this level with X having all the armor and all the weapons. That's cool. So actually, there are mini bosses at this stage. These rolling diggers are insta-kills. Fuck! Which is what I was trying to tell you before you killed yourself. Well. So, yeah, those are insta-kill, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you, they can be destroyed, and you and um, using the uh, the Storm Tornado and, or Supercharged X-Buster, it is possible to destroy them. Although... Too many bats. For the first, uh, for the first time you encounter one... You want to go ahead and just run ahead of it. All right. So come to jump, jump down and just run. And dash. I would recommend dash jumping because there's something we actually need to get here. So dash jump, and you you can actually headbutt those bricks to get the the life energy. All right. Well, I was going to tell you to get the other one to fill your sub tanks, and that spikes. And spikes are insta kill. Okay, do not run all the way. Now run back to where the uh, to where the driller came from. Oh, oh shit! You dropped into the pit almost twice now. <laughs> really, if there's any like tips I can give as far as like performing better, it's uh, it's your placement of your thumb that really helps quite a bit. And using your thumb 
to tap the buster and dash buttons and then leaving the bottom thumb to jump really goes ahead and leaves your, uh, makes things easier. All right. Ay, ay. So, uh, interesting thing about the password, even though this is a, even though this is a, um, a, a, a virtual console Nintendo game, you can actually still put in the old school passwords, and you can still get up the old saves. So, the, I know that there's at least one or two saves that like get you all the items. Get out of my way! God damn it, bats! Sorry. I know there's at least one or two old-fashioned saves that let you uh, get some extra things. Also, you can actually die from uh, from missing the jump, so be careful. Um, this one you're going to want to destroy with the Storm Tornado. Oh! Quit mashing the start menu and just keep spamming it until he dies, and hopefully we can get this thing here. And no, we're not. Damn it! Yeah, he literally destroys the ceiling that prevents you from jumping up to get the heart tank. And because he starts out in front of you, he's not going to let you... You can't uh, get in front of him without risking death by spikes. And you just let the train go away from you. God damn it, I'm not having a good time. Uh, At the very least, there aren't spikes on the top of the ceiling. I hate these minor so, robots. So, arguably, because of Zero's goofiness, we're not going to see the most epic shot in this, uh... We're not going to see the most epic shot of this, uh, level. Because Zero fucked it up. Sorry! So, uh, we're going to have to see it again when it, when, they come, when I come back here to go find some extra goodies. Um, good luck making this jump! Seriously? Yeah, you have to ride the minecart all the way through. Fucking hell. So let's try the heart tank again. So start off with the... Yeah, start off with the storm equipped and start shooting as soon as you like. Yeah. And just keep mashing it as much as you can. It doesn't come out right away because it's a continuous shot, but you want to still be mashing it as much as... Okay. See, there you go. All right. Now jump and get the heart tank. Yay. There we go. And we're almost at full. It actually goes much... Oof, wow. At least I got the heart tank. Uh, how many lives do you have left? One. Or technically two because zero counts as... Is, we're in the old age of zero counts as a life technically, so... If you want to destroy him fast, you can also use the flame wave. Eh. I don't, well, I don't really need it anymore, so... Yeah, but it's just annoying to have him right there and fuck you over. Oh. Alright, so dash jump. There you go, and dash jump again. Alright, there you go. And just occasionally shoot to make sure nothing gets in your way. And those enemies only appear if you do the ride with the, uh, with the minecart. And that is why this level is so epic. Uh, you may want to jump. Okay. All right. And there you go. All right. Any recommendations for the fight? Yeah, you're gonna want to use the uh, sh the the shock ball thing. All right. Okay. So, darn it! I keep doing that. Start menu. Start menu. Or the shoulders. There you go. So the. There we go. Yes, yeah, spark ball. He's really weak to this. Well, he's yeah. It's kind of weak. Well, you'll see why. So, Armored Armadillo. He's actually a pain in the ass if you don't have his weakness. He's, uh, first rule, he's impervious while he's rolling. Second rule, you want to shoot him when he's unpro while he's unprotected. Like that? When you do that, it knocks off his armor, making him, uh, penet and making him vulnerable while rolling, to vulnerable to damage while rolling, and it makes him, um... Uh, Makes him take damage from your buster easier. Okay, I need to do this a little bit better. That was kind of stupid of me. I'm sorry. So the head cannon that he has, you can just jump over it, and the only time you really need to move is when he starts rolling around. And that's really all of his attacks. All right. The only reason he's a pain in the ass is because his armor allows him to block. So now shoot. So shoot, and that does super damage. You don't need to climb on the walls, and I highly disrecommend you climbing on the walls. Just jump the shots. 
Because if you climb on the walls, what I find ends up happening is that you end up getting hit by the re by his uh, rebounds. So jump the shots. Jump the sh no, do not go on the walls. Jump the shots. And you can actually sh once got he's him. unarmored, then you can shoot him. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, but I got him. Yeah, with with using all the lives we had. <laughs> I'm sorry. I am so very sorry. And you're, and you're saying we don't practice for Bayonetta. Shut up. I have not had time to play this game. Exactly. That's what we said. <laughs> God damn it. I'm practicing for everything else. All anyway, right. we get the rolling shield, which actually, if you put it in a, in a walled area, will bounce back and forth like a Koopa shell. Cool. All right. In the next episode, we take a dip in a pool, we go explore some caves, and uh, we go climb a tower. All right. Until then. next time, see you then. Later, guys. <laughs>